Hi friends, it's Claire from Scrappy Nerds UK and I'm up today for UK Scrap Addicts and I'm kicking off this month's new theme which is sewing and it is one of those topics that either you love or you absolutely hate. So I wanted to show how you can do some minimal stitching um, but to maximum effect. So here I am scrapping a 9 by 12 layout and I'm just distressing the edges of my white cardstock and you'll see the pattern paper behind that's going to give my uh, my uh, white cardstock a border around the edge. So I'm going to come back to that bit because um, I don't want to stick it down just yet. So I have cut some strips of pattern paper from the paper pad that I just showed you that's from... Um, it's a Hobbycraft paper pad and it's got rainbows and unicorns and um, clouds so I had to have it. So I'm just using some different punches to give myself some strips. So the idea for this was to help build up a, a bulk on my layout, so a bulk cluster of papers, of stamps and of um, stitching. So before I do that, I'm just adding on some black Hardy Swap Colour Shine and just making some bigger and some smaller splatters. And it's important I do this bit first before I start um, stitching because I don't particularly want um, the ink splatters to soak into the stitching. So those are my pattern paper strips. I think I only go with three in the end. So I've just got a stamp here that's uh, all stars. And I'm going to line it up with that bottom pattern paper. So I think the bottom one I'd done a torn edge. Um, and that's another way that you can get different border strips um, so if you don't have any border punches or not many border punches, then yeah, do um, torn edges will give you a, um, a different effect that you can use as well. So I've dusted off my So Easy tool. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, then it's this little handle that you can buy a whole load of different attachments for it. And you just run it along your paper and it pierces the stitching holes for you. So I've got quite a few different heads, um, the attachment heads for it. Um, so I pulled out four of them. I only go with three of them in the end. And um, here is where I start my stitching. So I've run that, um, at the little piercing attachment over in a straight line above the uh, pattern paper that I've already stuck down. And you can see there it's created like a scalloped pattern. So I am doing a straightforward uh, back stitch on this uh, particular one and I'm using threads in coordinating colours so I've had a look at that rainbow paper that's going to go behind and I've pulled some colours of thread that um, will match that. So to do the straightforward back stitch all you want to do is you want to go up and then down up into the next one and then go back one to close the loop and then come back up that one again. So I know that's quite quick. Um, so if you want to need to watch the video over a couple of times, if you haven't done stitching before, um, then um, just pause and rewind and see what, see what I just did there. So that's my scallop one. And then next I'm going to add on this one here that I've put through the border punch. And I've also put the rainbow paper behind those stars as well. Which I thought was a nice little added extra. And then I'm going to come in with, um, I think I do another line of um, stitching first. So this is the straight stitch. This is just a normal one. And I run that straight over and then I realise actually it's quite far away from that pattern paper. So you'll see that uh, I bring some stamps to fill that space in shortly. So this one here, I do a chain stitch. So chain stitch is done um, by creating loops and then tying those loops off by coming through the next hole. And 
you'll see what I mean in just a second when when I start so I'm just changing the color thread here and I'm going with all six strands so um, you can make life easier on yourself and just use two strands um, embroidery floss normally comes in um, in six strands in total um, but trying to thread them through a needle can be problematic so this is what happens you go up and down through the same hole and then you come up through the next one and then you go down through the same hole and up through the next one down through that same hole hold that loop and up through the next one so this will give you a completely different effect um, to what backstitch gives you and um, yeah so it's much more heightened um, it's very textured and I quite like the look of different um, stitches when I'm doing a stitch layout so this is where I'm coming in just with a couple of stars and I'm going to stamp it all the way along there just to fill that um, that white gap and then my next border strip here as I said these are all from the same pattern paper so um, I um, I know that they'll all coordinate and it's nice to have different patterns so I've got a, a polka dot and that little um, one there I'm using there has got little flowers on um, but all the colours will coordinate because they match the rainbow paper that's going to be um, behind my white cardstock and then I come in with this amazing one. I love this one and it gives you this loop effect. So the reason I didn't stick my white cardstock down onto my uh, backing pattern paper is because if I'm trying to pierce the holes, I'm gonna have to force the piercer to go through two layers. So I've, st I've not stuck my paper down just yet for that very reason. Um, there is a tip for you. Make sure that if you are piercing your own holes, you can use um, you could use something printed from the internet. Um, if you don't have one of these, um, you could do something freehand. Um, then you don't need to um, you you need something underneath. So you can use a piercing mat. You can use a couple of layers of foam doubled up. Um, people have even used corrugated card. So something that you can actually push. Um, a hole through the paper into a softer surface underneath um, so there's a few different things you can use to do that so I've gutted that rainbow paper and because um, I'm going to use that to map my photo on so now I've done my stitching I'm just going to add my um, add it onto that back that rainbow background paper and there we are so next I'm going to come in with um, my photo. It's just a Snapchat selfie of, of me. I love Snapchat's um, filters. I never put anything on Snapchat. I just love the filters that you get on it. Um, I just think it brightens up photos when there's not really any story to tell. Um, and it's just a cool photo. Then um, yeah, Snapchat's great for that. So I'm just backing my photo with um, the remainder of that rainbow paper. Um, and I was going to add in another layer of it, but um, it didn't need it. So I'm going to put a doily behind um, instead, because why not? I've added a layer of some, uh, just some cheapy fun foam. And pop my photo at a little bit of an angle. Just above all of the strips there. So I'm coming back in with the um, the little stars and i'm going to move those stars up and around the photo that's just to continue the theme of the stars from the bottom up to the top as well and there we are uh, i love anything that's just teeny tiny um really helps to add to a page and fill in some of those blank spaces sometimes so my title is very cool as in very cool, as in very cool. Um, I know it's not a great play on words, but I didn't really have anything else to say, um, or but it needed a title. So um, I've used in these um, thickers. These are dear Lizzy ones from, they're, they're years old. Um, so it's great to be able to get some, uh, some stash used up. 
and I really wanted to um, make the title pop on this because everything, although we've got the stitching on there, everything else was quite flat. Um, so I thought I would just add some little foam dots, <clears throat> excuse me, some foam dots behind my title. And then I laid it a little bit um, higgledy piggledy um, across there, um, across this, it was across one of the border strips and the stitching and I love how that finished I've never put um the th any thickers up on uh foam before so that's a that's a new one by me and I like how that looks so next up I'm just coming in with some final flourishes so um adding in some enamel dots in coordinating colors and there were some little hearts as well these are just from my stash um, and it's great just to pull things out now I do I am a terrible um, scrapbooker when it comes to only sticking to a collect one collection at a time so I like to scrapbook with the same collection but this I just had bits and bobs that I just threw together and I love the way that it turned out now I had these stars floating around on my desk from another project that I've been working on um, and I thought they worked perfectly so i love little happy accidents these are 3d stars and um if you wanted a tutorial on how to make these then um leave me a comment um down below whether you're watching on my channel scrappy nerd uk or uk scrap addicts um leave <clears throat> leave a comment and um and i shall arrange for a video over on my channel now if you are watching on um, my scrappy nerd uk channel then I do um, encourage you to go over to the UK Scrap Addicts Facebook page um, and also the YouTube um, YouTube channel as well. We have a team of YouTubers every month that we scrap to the, the um, theme that we have. So this month it will be sewing. So there's loads of inspiration. Um, so I will leave that all linked up down in the comments down below for you. And so all I'm doing here is just to ensure that these stars stay a little bit 3D. I'm just adding a couple of foam dots to the middle and then I'm adding some wet glue to the outsides um, to stick those down. And my layout is done. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you again soon. Bye.